morning. On the evening of January 12th, I was um, coming back from a uh, leave, and we were in the airport in Chicago. And when I came out of the restroom, I saw my wife watching this. It's heartrending. Mr. After Ambassador, we've been hearing reports that a hospital collapsed, that people are crying out under that collapsed structure. Have you heard anything along those lines? Uh, I spoke with somebody from World Vision uh, while I was on the air on CNN, and uh, he was saying there was wailing, crying all over, dust rising up all over the place. Uh, so he also said uh, that's all he can say. Nobody can count the dead yet. Uh, but he said it's going to be a real catastrophe. President Obama, Mr. Ambassador, issued a statement and said, my thoughts and prayers go out to those who have been affected by this earthquake. We're closely monitoring the situation, and we stand ready to assist the people of Haiti. What kind of help and support might you need from the United States and other nations? Uh, you know, in the past, the United States came to our help. In 2008, we had four hurricanes that hit Haiti in a matter of three weeks, and the United States had dispatched the uh, USS Comfort to Haitian waters, uh, hospital beds uh, among the Comfort, and the Southern Command, uh, which is the U.S. military in Florida, came to Haiti's support. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, our, t our destination was set. So on January 12th, as he stated, there was a seven earthquake that hit Haiti. Uh, most importantly, as you can see, it's centered at the primary mass location of most, patient, most people in Haiti. Uh, the, red, the deep red is actually at the epicenter of the earthquake, and as the stars, again, shows the, ma the majority of the concentration of folks. Essential services were destroyed. Hospital streets were unnavigable. Un Government buildings were heavily damaged. Communications were down. There's a high number of dead and wounded. On the 13th, we received notification of mobilization. On the 15th, 550 reported to the USMS Comfort in Baltimore, and from there we deployed. The USMS Comfort is a Mercy class hospital ship with over 800 inpatient beds, 200 ICU beds, as well as 180 casualty receiving beds. The complement of staff that we brought together was a humanitarian group that we had brought just six months earlier with Continuing Promise 09. This involved three general surgeons, a pediatric orthopedic surgeon, one general pediatric surgeon, two OB-GYNs, a craniofacial plastic surgeon, ENT, urologists, as well as 12 anesthesia providers. On January 19th, we took our first two patients, and this was a head trauma and abdominal crush injury, and we quickly went from the young boy on the left to an entirely full ship. As most military statements go, Semper Gumby, and this really was the, the statement throughout this entire mission. Today, uh, we actually burned through two fluoro machines because of such high use. Um, and again, maxing out at about 40 to 50. And then again, once we came down to the humanitarian response, back to approximately 20 to 35 cases per day. Remember the admissions that we had for the adult populations going up and then starting to be able to discharge. This is in stark contrast to the PEDS patients, which raised their admissions and stayed at that level till the very end of the mission. Key behind these patients is that parents were either dead or missing, and we had to have continued follow-on care for these, these children to figure out where they could go safely. So the phases of disaster medicine, again, to kind of highlight some of these issues behind our mission is that kind of similar to the trauma evaluations of immediate delayed minor and then finally the humanitarian conversion and just some thoughts on each of these phases. Phase one, again, this is life and limb problems that were coming acutely off the field, first responder type problems. And this is a very common injury that we saw in children, keeping in mind that the largest part of a child is gonna be their head. And this child had been trapped in the rubble for four days whereby you had full tissue necrosis down to cranium, no overlying tissue over top of that in a triangular fashion around the head. We received 12 of these patients during the time of our, during the time of our uh, first four days and created quite a challenge to be able to close these wounds. 
Phase two, this is gonna be actual trying to track patients, um, whereby the initial phases of, we knew who was going to die and who was gonna be able to be operated upon, but there was a continued process of continuous 20 to 30 admissions every two to three hours, and being able to track these patients. This is our OR board for the day, as we then either had to wash out and have continued surgeries, they'd hit the second board to be able to be tracked what date they needed to go to. And then as our initial triage, we had these each for the different services that as you came out of the OR in the evening, being able to have some time off to be able to track the patients down to be able to get an actual management schema behind you. So organization was absolutely critical during this point. Then finally, the humanitarian phase. This is an example that I gave out of this. Uh, the, this approximately day 14 of the mission. There was a 16-year-old who had had an MVC hit by a car. We had this initial chest x-ray, um, whereby, as you can see, the NG tube curled up into the chest. The presumed diagnosis at this point was going to be a ruptured diaphragm. We took immediately to the operating room, whereby he had a congenital diaphragmatic hernia that was he had been living with for 16 years and unknown. So again, Hum humility behind some of these things that you're seeing and seeing patients who are well beyond what your normal care would be. And finally, the lessons learned from our trip, from our time. As I remember, we said we went with a humanitarian uh, complement of surgeons. This was not the appropriate uh, continuum, appropriate package of surgeons that we had with us. Of course, we were able to surge with an additional 24 orthopedic surgeons and that the disaster, this did not equal disaster response with humanitarian package. It's important to understand humanitarian assistance, you bring with you what resources you want to provide to the home country. If you're not able to provide resources, the country's no worse for the wear. If you're not able to bring an ENT doctor on board, then you're not able to provide ENT care. Patients will not be anything for the worse. That's in contrast to disaster response. The country dictates the needs. You do not dictate the needs. So quickly, the four general surgeons became orthopedic surgeons for our first three days on board. We were able to becoming burn doctors, ENT doctors as they needed. Compassion fatigue was significant, and I can't stress this enough. We had salty general surgeons, trauma surgeons who were from the Middle East who had said they'd never seen things of such. I can tell you after training in the pre-ADR work week, I've never come so close to breaking as those first four days of the mission. Uh, they were 22, 23 hour days, continuous operating without end in sight. These children were without any families, without any hope, and you had to sit there and look at them to figure out what you needed to provide, what care. These were things that we needed to issue of what could you do for these children that would help them be able to get back and have any function in the future. This is the group that went with us. Again, we had thankfully been together only four months before on continuing Promise 09 as a group. We were a well-oiled machine that arrived in Haiti, so we were able to actually communicate, go through the ORs, and surge very quickly together. So final words of phase one is defined. As I said, this was actually at the end of the third and a half day, 3 a.m. in the morning, where we all came out of the OR waiting for the next surge of patients coming off the helicopters and we had a moment to sit down. The director of surgery said, everyone sit down, let's have a moment. And again, it lasts so long. I can tell you at the third and a half day, an hour before that, it did not seem like it would end. But those patients who are actually gonna need help in the acute phase, there's only so much time that they have, and you can get through it. Organization is critical. Again, uh, being able to set, quickly come up with an organization method to be able to track patients when you're bringing in when you're going from zero to 500 patients, which is the size of a large hospital in many places in the country, and you're being able to track those patients uh, to be able to find out what further care that they would require. And then finally, phase three needs to be defined early. From the military mission, uh, the Haitian hospitals were completely devastated. They had no further uh, care. They had no abilities to actually treat patients, and they needed to be able to restore those, those issues quickly. Two of the Three of the big populations that we had difficulties with were children, as well as spinal injuries and sacral decubiti, where these patients had no further treatment for them on, in country and had no abilities. And frankly, sending them on in country again was a death sentence for many of them. Transitioning to home country was critical. Uh, we were able to help in assisting the, the local uh, hospitals re regain some of their function. Uh, we went, after we started to 
uh, trend down to more humanitarian missions. We sent uh, physicians and surgeons on shore to help the local doctors. Uh, one of the uh, functions of continuing Promise 09, the humanitarian mission, which is actually ongoing right now with 11, is to establish relationships with these countries. And I had, frankly, trainees on board with me in 09 uh, with the continuing promise that we're in country that I was able to help and to this day continue to give uh, advice and education. And then again, this is the kind of last word of taking care of your junior colleagues. As difficult as it was uh, for us, uh, who have been through a lot, and the point, a lot of the corpsmen and junior physicians have never seen such. And I can tell you, uh, on our leaving the ship, our uh, Captain Ware would met, meet with each individual sailor. And his statement to you was, determine who can be who can empathize and who can sympathize with you and figure out who they are. And try to be there for those that need empathy, who can understand what you've gone through to figure out what you need to have in the future psychologically and emotionally. So this is actually a uh, drawing of one of our uh, patients uh, before we left the, the, the area. And I think it's a very interesting perspective of a Haitian uh, national. You can see in the background the comfort with everyone being happy that we were there. However, the absolute dissolution and people dying and continued problems, frankly, today. The situation is not over and it continues to this day of the difficulties that they're having and hopefully Haiti is not forgotten. Thank you. <laughs>